Today we're going to continue our discussion of multiplication. Let's take a look at our content objective. We're going to model, create, and describe multiplication situations. And let's all read our language objectives today. We will talk and listen to our partners. We will write down our multiplication problems and words. And we will read one another's work. For the last couple of days, we've just talked about what is multiplication. So let's do a quick review. I need six volunteers to come up to the front of the room. Awesome. So let's have Evan, Morgan, and Anya come up. Uh, Claire, Thomas, and Maha come on up. If you could face, your, face the rest of the room, please. Later today, we're going to be doing this language arts activity where you're going to be working in a group and you're each going to have a set number of markers. And I need to prepare. So I need to know how many markers total I will need for the lesson. So let's count how many students there are, how many groups there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, later when we're doing the activity, every person will need three markers. But I don't know how many I need total. So this is a perfect example of a real-life multiplication problem. So I need each person to have three markers. So I'm going to hand out three to here. <coughs> Three here, three here, three here, three here, and three here. Okay, now in our discussion beforehand, we learned that multiplication is repeated. Addition. Awesome. So let's go ahead and repeatedly add the numbers together and see how many markers we have total. Okay? All right, so let's start with here. How many markers do you have? Three. Plus? Three. Plus? Three. Plus? Three. Plus? Three. Plus? Awesome. So let's now add together. I need everyone's voice on. Ready? Okay, three plus three. Th three plus, we got three here. Three plus three is? Six. Six plus three is? Nine. Nine plus three is? So I have 18 total markers because I have six students and each student is holding three markers. That's how I knew to add three plus three plus three plus three plus three or six times three. Okay? Thank you, volunteers. Can I have my markers back? This, now I'll know what my total is. You can take a seat once you give me your markers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So on board with that. Give me a fist of five if you understood why we had 18 markers. Fist to five. Remember fist means I'm real shaky. One means I'm pretty good. Two, three, four, five. Quickly. Ready, set, show me. Awesome. Lots of fours and fives. Awesome. All right, clear your screen. What I want to do right now is we're going to be moving now into our next section of our topic nine. We're going to be writing a story for a multiplication <coughs> problem. So I went ahead and I saw multiplication problem four times three. All right? Why well, put that number sentence into a story? So here's my problem in words. Daniel has four bags. There are three apples in each bag. How many apples does Daniel have? Okay. In just a second, you're going to take your connecting cubes and your paper, your math mats, and you're, we're going to try to solve this problem together. But real quick, there's some, there's a word in here that's really important for us to zero in on when we're talking about multiplication. Does anyone know what that word is? Thomas, I saw your hand go right up. Each. Each. Why is each so important? I even, I know it's so important, I even put it over here. Because this is the word that we're going to be writing today and saying. What does that tell me? Why is it so important? Mm, a little help? Why is it so important? Why is that so important? Sunny? Because you know that he does that many apples in each bag. Exactly. It tells me the number of apples in each bag. So when you're writing problems today, make sure you have that word in your story problem because it's a great clue that we're going to be multiplying. So right now, I want you to take... We're going to go ahead and solve this problem. I want you to take these squares that you have, okay? And these, those squares are going to represent the number of bags. How many bags do we need? Four. four. So go ahead and count four out. And 
and lay and put them all across your desk. Put four all across your desk. You might have more than four, so just put those extra ones away. Awesome. Okay, if those, those white papers are representing the bags, your connecting cubes are representing the apples. There are three apples in each bag. Go ahead and put your three apples in each bag. Because our goal is to find out the total number of apples Daniel has. what's on your desk. I love how you used your tools to guide your illustration. All right, you're on the right track. Keep it up. Okay. 
Okay, so how are you going to show it on the with your mat and your connecting cubes? We're going to put seven papers and put five trains on each. Okay, so let's go ahead and see that. I really like your problem because you use the word each and you have a question sentence with a question mark to signal that you're asking something. Is it important to make sure that you have the correct number on each mat? Yes. Why? Why is that so important? Because we're all the problem. Right. And Skylar, okay, so how many mats do you have? One, two, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so make sure that you have one on each mat. Cool. And the cool thing about putting five as your other number is how? what can you count up by? Five. Five. So let's count together. Ready? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Great, so what's your total number of trains that you have on the mat? 35. 35 trains. Great work together. I like how you collaborated. And your drawing's going to look great, too. Thanks, guys. Keep working.